One of Us is Back by Karen McManus, read by Brittany George. Chapter 13, Phoebe, Tuesday, July 7th. Thanks for the ride, I say stiffly as I get into the passenger seat of Cooper's car. Of course, he says over a loud rattling hum. Sorry about the noise. It's fine, I say, clipping my seatbelt. It doesn't sound good, but in the greater scheme of things, who cares? This is the first time I've left the house in almost two days, and I'd probably still be in my room if Cooper hadn't offered me a ride to Cafe Conigo to meet up with the rest of the Bayview crew. Even my mother, as horrified as she is about what happened on 4th of July weekend, feels like I'm safe with Cooper around. Nani wanted me to give you these, Cooper says, reaching into the back seat to hand me a Tupperware container. They're cookies. She says that she hopes you'll come by sometime when you're feeling up to it. Doesn't have to be to deliver lunch. Tell her thanks, I say, swallowing hard, and I will. Then my throat closes up before I can tell him that I'm sorry I missed his commercial. I watched the clip last night, and it almost made me smile. How are you doing? He asks as he backs out of my driveway. Okay, I say, a small, simple word that doesn't seem to convey the weekend I've had. I don't remember much of it because according to the toxology reports, there were traces of rufinol in my system when in Bayview Memorial Hospital got back the results of all the tests they gave me. Roofies? I'd ask the doctor, clutching the edge of my hospital gown tightly around me. So somebody, somebody drugged you, she confirmed. A wave of nauseated horror washed over me. I've never been so drunk that I blacked out, so maybe I should have realized sooner that something was deeply wrong, but I didn't understand, until right at that second, how calculated my lost night had been. When I'd woken up with Addie and Nate beside me, my mouth dry and my head aching, I thought maybe I'd wandered into the shed on my own. Even after I saw the word on my arm, I thought some jerk did it at the party, but as soon as Detective Minosa said, somebody drugged you, all I could think was who and why. When I came to, my clothes were dusty from the shed, but not torn or out of place. The knot I had tied in my belt in Nate's bathroom was still there, and it was a comfort, but didn't change the fact that somebody doctored my drink, took me from Nate's backyard, and then wrote on me. My arm is scrubbed clean, but every time I look at it, I'm positive that I can still see a faint outline of the letters, that I can feel them, like they were burned into my skin. A sick, nasty prank, one of the nurses said at the hospital when I thought I couldn't hear. The kids in this town are flat out horrible, aren't they? They can be, but somehow I don't think the prank even begins to cover what happened to me. The police asked where I had gotten the drinks that night, and the last one I remembered was the one that Sean handed to me. While I couldn't put it past Sean Murdoch to roofie someone, the doctor at Bayview Memorial said that the drug hadn't kicked in that fast, and the double vision I'd experienced while talking to Sean and Jules and Monica probably meant it was already in my system. Plus, there's no way Sean brought me to the Bayview High Equipment Shed. Crystal took his keys and sent him home with one of her friends. Before that, I had gotten drinks from Knox and Louise, both of whom I trust with my life. Vanessa gave me a drink after I stalked away from Bayview Corner, and then I stole another one from her, which the Bayview police found interesting. I suppose I could have grabbed a drugged drink by mistake if somebody was targeting Vanessa, but why am I the one who was taken from Nate's house and dumped in a shed? And then there was this time I spent in Reggie's room, which I barely remember. Could someone have handed me a drink in there? Was it Reggie? I don't think so, but part of the night was such a surreal quality that I'm not sure what really happened from the time I left the bathroom until I staggered out of Nate's house. I'm positive I didn't send a text to my mother saying that I was staying over at Addie's. For one thing, no matter how out of it I was, I wouldn't have forgotten that Addie was mad at me. And for another, there is no way I could have sent such a long message with no typos at that point in the night. But if I didn't, who did? It had to be someone who knows who my friends are, somebody who probably held my phone up to my face to unlock it, searched for mom in my contacts, and made sure that nobody would check up on me for a good long while. Oh, Phoebe, you've made a big mistake. Did someone actually say that, or was I dreaming? I can't be sure, especially since it's the kind of thing that I'd say to myself. I shake off my thoughts and try to focus on the road. You missed a turn for Cafe Conigo, I say as Cooper Sills pass it. Yeah, I know, he says. I thought I'd take you somewhere else first, if that's okay. It's right down the street. My curiosity is piqued despite myself. Where? The auto shop where Manny used to work, he says, making another turn. I, um, okay, I say, confused. Are you getting your car fixed? No, nothing like that, Cooper says. He pulls into a deserted lot surrounded by a chain link fence and parks beside the most decrepit car I have ever seen. It's missing all four tires and both the front and back bumpers and it's covered with rust and dents. 
This just got stripped for parts and is getting hauled to the junkyard soon. Before it does, well, let me show you. We get out of Cooper's Jeep and he picks up an oversized hammer leaning against one side of the car. After Simon died, when things got really bad, Luis brought me here, he says. There was another car just like this one. He handed me a sledgehammer and told me to whack the hell out of it until I felt better. It seemed like a dumb idea until I actually did it. It helped, so I thought maybe it'd help you too. I blink at him, frozen in place, and he swings the sledgehammer lightly, making a small dent in the driver's side door. Phoebe, I can't relate to everything that's happened to you Saturday night, he says, but I know what it feels like to have your life, like your life doesn't belong to you anymore and feel like you can't talk about it. Cooper swings the hammer again, his gaze locked on the car. When I told Lonnie what happened, you know what she said? She said that's terrible, especially because that girl was already in a world of pain. My eyes sting as he continues. I asked her what she meant, and she said, well, she hasn't said anything specific, but I can tell. Nani's never wrong about stuff like that. Cooper turns and holds out the sledgehammer to me. You don't have to say anything, but if it helped to take a swing at something, go ahead. I gingerly grab the handle, and it feels good in my hands, but my feet stayed rooted in place long enough that Cooper adds, and if this was a bad idea, we can leave. No, I say, taking a deep breath as I lift the sledgehammer over one shoulder. It wasn't. I step towards the car, take aim, and hit the driver's side door with every ounce of strength that I have. It makes an incredibly satisfying dent, so I pull back and hit the car again. Then I move towards the hood before taking another swing, and another, and another, and another, for every single awful thing that's happened to me over the past few months. Learning of how my dad died, the truth or dare game, Brandon's death, the blow up with Emma, Jared's plot, Nate's injury, Owen's lies... Feeling like I had to separate myself from Knox and Maeve and Addie and everyone I cared about and then getting drugged and dragged into a goddamn shed. I hit the car so many times that my arms were as strong as they hurt and anger coursing through me as it pulverized me to dust. It's not, it's not, but it's an even bigger mess of deep dents than I finally stop breathing heavily and look into Cooper's kind judgment free eyes. Thanks, I say. You were right. I needed that. Thanks for reading with me today. If you liked this video, make sure to like and subscribe.